Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the complex analysis. Today I will explain you the concept of the Cauchy inequality. Myself, Dr. Harishkar. You can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of the complex analysis. You can see in this complete playlist a theory lectures related to the Cauchy Riemann equations, harmonic functions, complex integrations, residue theorems, and many more lectures available in this playlist. You can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel. Now, what we have discussed so far, we have learned if your function is my analytic in the complex domain D, then it's all the derivative, whether it's a first derivative, second derivative, or the nth derivatives are also analytic. For more detail about this concept, you must watch about my lecture on the derivative of analytic functions. Now, what is the question that arises here? So as we all know, if the function is my analytic, the derivatives are also analytic. Can, can you find the upper bound on these analytic functions? Like, can you find the upper bound of the first derivatives? Can you find the upper bound of the second derivatives and so on? So can you find the upper bounds? And that's the question arises here. And the answer is, of course, you can find and the result provided here is Cauchy inequality. Fine. Now, what is the statement of the Cauchy inequality? If you have the function which is analytic in the domain D, where D is my interior and boundary of the circle gamma, like say this is my xy plane, fine, and I can take an as any of the circle, this is my circle D, with the center is z0, this is my center, and the radius is my r, fine. If f is analytic inside this domain D and on the boundary such that f of z is my bounded, fine. f is my bounded. So based on this bounded, can you say your f dash, f double dash, and nth derivative are also bounded? That is a Cauchy inequality states. So if the function is bounded and analytic inside the domain D, then you can say the upper bound of the nth derivative will be n factorial m over r raised to power n, where r is the radius of the circle. Fine. And that's the result of the Cauchy inequality. The proof is a very, very simple. I can prove them in a, uh, within the three to four lines. So before that, I hope you can like and comment on the video. What is given to you? F is my analytic functions, but we need the nth derivative. So what does it mean? That means the nth derivative is also analytic. By using the previous result, derivative of the analytic function is analytic. And once we know this is my analytic function, then we can use the Cauchy, inequal, uh, Cauchy integral formula. Fine. What is the Cauchy integral formula of the nth derivative? Is it fine? Now your target is to take the modulus value of f of nth derivative. So what is the modulus value of the function? It is less than equal to integration of the modulus value. So it will be less than equal to n factorial over 2 pi iota modulus integration modulus of fz divided by modulus of z minus z0 n plus 1 and the modulus of zn. Can you find the modulus of 2 pi iota? The modulus of that 2 pi iota is 2 pi and it is a n factorial. So I can write this number is less than equal to n factorial over 2 pi integration over the curve gamma f of z divided by z minus z0 and so on. Now since f is my bounded, I can substitute this value which is less than equal to n factorial over 2 pi. This is m. What is the value of the z minus z0? It is r raised to power n plus 1 over the dz. Fine. Now because we integrate with respect to z, m over 2, uh, m over r raised to power n plus 1 is constant which is outside and what is the value of the curve surface area? This is the surface area. So that is the value of the 2 pi r. So that is the value, the integration of this portion is my 2 pi r. So you can see the 1 r will be cancelled, 2 pi will be cancelled. It is n factorial m 
over r raised to power n is the required proof of this result so you can see that it's a very very simple proof of this cauchy inequality now now the next question arises here is so before again i hope you can subscribe my youtube channel and put the comment on this video now the next question arises is we have seen if f is my analytic f is my bounded fine so can you say the function is a constant can you say the function is a constant if your function is analytic and bounded if yes then what could be the conditions if no then what under what condition then we can say the f of z is constant so for that we will study the next lecture that is related to the leibniz theorem and that we will study in our next lectures hope you can enjoy this session too and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channels and share this video with your friends best of luck students thanks for the watching